Steady, are you ready? Yeah. What's going on? Okay. Hello my favorite people. Today we're going to be learning about Wales history. Y'all have been asking relentlessly about some videos about Wales and obviously we've done Scotland, we've done Ireland, we've done the UK, we've done Britain. So all that's left to really do is Wales. Fun fact, I was watching a, you know, revolutionary show or whatever you call those, those historical shows and they were talking about Northumbria, Wessex, all those places. And I actually learned that King Henry VIII in like the 1800s actually unified Britain and Wales into one country, which I thought was very confusing because how can they be one country when they're two separate countries? I know Wales has their own flag, their own culture, their own, their own border, their own identity, aside from the UK, which is like the big body of the U... No, aside from Britain, which is the big body of the UK. So I just thought that was interesting. How can you say... Wales and Britain are one country, but they're not. Anyways, let's just get right into the history of Wales. I don't know how far back this is going to take us. I'm here for the ride as well as you all. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. If you haven't yet, like the video, subscribe to the second channel too, follow me on Instagram, and let's go. Fast introductions. We love to see it. We don't have time for an ad! The history of the British Isles is an uneven affair, to put it mildly. We're mm. familiar with how Scotland and Ireland drew the imperial short stick and enjoyed the pleasure of being sat upon by England, but perhaps the shortest stick of the bunch was drawn by Wales, who oh, was man. often left out of the discussion entirely. And well, If you haven't seen my... Oh my god. The IRA videos I've done about um, England, the Saxon or Briton videos I've done about Scotland, go back and watch those. Damn, Britain. Perhaps the shortest stick of the bunch was drawn by Wales, who was often left out of the discussion entirely. <laughs> While I'm shocked that anybody Whale could joke. gloss over the country that is a freaking dragon flag, Wales has been tragically sidelined from the historical narrative of the Isles, and I will not stand for it. Wales <laughs> has impressively and improbably maintained Ooh, a distinct that's beautiful. Public culture since the very start. Vikings! Oh, I okay. I just finished watching Vikings, and I'm currently watching The Last Kingdom, so... This is really, this is a lot of fun. Okay. And it is far too cool for historians to be doing them dirty like that. So, doing see how dirty. Wales did the hard carry for Great Britain's culture for 2,000 straight years? Let's do some history. A proper understanding of this whole Wales business requires us to go way back in British history. <sighs> no, 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 too far. Yeah, there we go. See, Celtic culture in Britain is the foundation of what will eventually become Wales, but these guys aren't the easiest to get a handle on. The Celtic, or Gallic, people stretched out from Central Europe towards mm. Gaul, Iberia, and the British Isles, but also went southeast towards the Black Sea. Okay, it's really interesting that he talks about the Celtic people being in Wales, because in the last, like, sort of history video we watched, we just watched them basically settle um, Scotland and Ireland, and we saw how the different people who conquered those areas kind of had, like, a shift in dynamic of culture, language, all that. How women were um, traded for alliance and money we got to see basically how this one culture basically evolved into two or thousand i guess hundreds of different cultures and now i guess he's saying celtic celtic history also has a big effect on wales as well i just thought wales was a basically british people just in a separate country wow one problem for us loser historians is that it's unclear how and even kinda if they settled in Britain. There are competing theories for who, when, where, and why, ranging from the standard migration models to the possibility that very few Celt- Okay, first of all, we don't need subtitles. We can all speak English. So turn those off. As with many periods in history, the life arrival of document- Ah. Uh, no, okay. How- Isn't it funny that you can't document history, but we have- these stories in the Bible dating back farther than the mind knows. So you can document freaking Noah building the ark, but you don't know how countries in the modern age that still exist were created? I feel like that's ridiculous. That's very ridiculous. Especially at this time, they knew how important history was and that documentation of culture and all that was very important. Regardless of if you were trying to conquer someone or not, I feel like it would... You would know to reserve or at least write down history. So how can, you, how can you not have any documentation of history? That's ridiculous. 
But whatever. Actually settled in Britain. Logic being that overseas trade was key to the Bronze Age economy, and Britain's tin deposits made them a big export hub. Since tin is half the chemical structure for bronze, that meant people from all over Europe and the Mediterranean mm. came to the Atlantic coasts to get their bronze on, and this includes our Celt boys. So it wasn't Celt mass boys. migration that brought Celtic people <laughs> to Britain, but rather local Britons who buddied up with Celtic traders by speaking their language and copying their swirly Latin art. So according Ooh. to this meme model, the local Britons thought Celtic culture was LOL, so relatable, XD that they adopted it all up and down the aisles. Whether or not this model is fully accurate, it would account for some weird archaeological and linguistic discrepancies in the traditional migration theory. And One notable quirk with a standard migration model is the divergence between the Britonic and Irish branches of the Celt Cel Gaelic. Gaelic language family. Gaelic. Okay, Gaelic, I'm I was confusing myself or I was just wrong. Gaelic is a language. Celtic is the name of the people in the culture. Celt- Or is Celtic- Alexa! Is Celtic a language? No. Celtic is not a language. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Celtic is not the language. Celtic is the culture and the people. Gaelic is a language. And there are actually different forms of Gaelic, which we learned in the last video. So cool. Continue. Also foreshadows the prestige placed on bards and literary prowess by later Celtic cultures. Because it's equal parts cool as all hell and existentially horrifying that a culture can basically by itself take hold of an entire population by willing itself into existence. This would be our first indication that Wales has big eldritch energy. Others Wait. Okay, is he talking about willing themselves into existence as in defeating and conquering or just assimilating into the culture that's already there and basically evolving with each other because i was about to say i was about to shade america but i don't really understand what he's saying right now can basically by itself take hold of an entire population by willing itself into existence this would be our first indication that wales has big eldritch energy other civilizations however would not follow this lead because of big eldritch energy that was a jab at big dick energy that's funny found that culture was best delivered by Spearpoint. While on their way to fill out their pan-imperial punch card and get their 10th new province free, Roman emperors in the mid-first century campaigned into Britain. Most Roman settlements were in the south and east, where all the easy agriculture was, and mm. although goods, coins, and Roman legions did make their way west, the cultural and linguistic impact on so-called- That's funny. That's a- I've never even thought about Rome that way, because whenever you think about Rome, you always just think about the person who basically conquered the world. They inno innovated technology. They were able to do the impossible. You only talk about Rome whenever you're talking about basically the beginning of the modern age. But that's true. They weren't very good people of governing. I mean, their lower classes were treated- this, but this applies also to every big monarch or settlement. The lower class people are treated like disposable trash uh, but they also just pointed out the governing how can you govern a place that's so big how can you monitor this place but you're all the way over here it's not really possible Tanya Secunda was only slight perhaps the most transformative thing the Romans did in Wales was leave because the <laughs> post Roman migrations from Central Europe into Britain totally upended the island's demographics frustratingly it's nigh impossible to show this kind of thing clearly on a map which is why turbulent centuries in history with slim documentation make blue a sad boy but here's the gist. We know the Angles, Saxons, and Jutes from Northern Europe arrived and displaced many of the Romano-Britons, but over in the West there was also an mm. influx of Irish Celts coming in to settle. This age of migrations was much more overtly migratory than the Celtic- Ooh. Okay, those are the Celtics, those are the Saxons, those are the Jutes. What did he say the A's were? I'm not sure. Afri- no. No. I don't know. ...in Britain and the millennium before, though- Again, the weather isn't Britons great. Didn't really leave. <laughs> After a few That's decades funny. of raiding gave way to much more peaceable settlement, most Britons were happy to start speaking Germanic and make friends with their new Saxon neighbors than to up and book it for the hills. Still, hmm. the end result was the confinement of native Celtic culture to the far west in Wales and Cornwall. And that split explains why it's called Wales. It comes from the Germanic word voila, meaning foreigner, while the Welsh call it Cymru, from the Celtic word for... Voila! Foreigner. Voila! So what is our voila? Like, whenever you, voila, like, surprise, look, foreigner. Maybe it's two different words. It comes from the Germanic word voila, meaning foreigner. German. The Welsh call it cymri, from the Celtic word for countryman. It's also... So I believe he's speaking the jutes there, but I'm not sure, so I'm still going to ask. So then, 
Gaelic derived from German? This migratory shuffle that the legend of the Romano-British King Arthur first pops up, though it'll be a king couple Arthur. centuries before he's labeled as Arthur or a king. Honestly, the whole early medieval period in Wales has this pseudo-mythic Age of Heroes vibe to it. Good documentation is blah, what else is new, but the oral traditions that will later become the core of Welsh epic literature get their start in this era. So, as far as we can tell, what was going on in medieval Wales? Well, isolation from Germanic majority England was good for preserving- Hold on, my computer's about to die. And that would royally suck if it did die in the middle of this reaction. Bitch. Ah! Okay. By Celtic culture, but the politics were much more wibbly. Various local princes vied for hegemony over the many disparate realms, but hegemony. succession always proved their undoing, as sons would squabble and big kingdoms would shrink back to where they started. The princes mm -hmm. of Gwyneth and Poes were the most successful of the bunch, and as a result, King o Gwyneth, Uhtred. Eckbert. All the names of like ancient Britain. Of Mercia built a dike across Mercia. the Mercia in the late 700s to try and keep Poets out. But that worked about as well as any frontier walls have worked throughout history, which is to say. The Kaiju, an enormous category force, broke through the postal wall in less than an hour. Barely. So despite the best attempts of Saxon kings and the Irish Sea, Wales wasn't entirely cut off from the rest of the world as they had gotten on board with Christianity thanks to the mm. missionary St. David back in the 6th century. They might not have been the most consistent of pen pals with the Pope in Rome, but they were mostly on the same page. That's so crazy, the 6th century. We're in the 21st century, almost the 22nd century, and they're talking about the 6th century right now. That's a lot of time. Wales' early medieval history of relative chill was aided by England's near-constant Viking tire fire, which pushed conquer Wales way down the to-do list. But that changed when our old pals the Normans kite-shielded their Normans. way to conquering England. Because suddenly, this new Norman England had a much stronger army, and they proceeded to point it right at Wales. Norman lords pushed into Wales along the northern and southern coasts and made some, but not a lot of progress. Since Wales was made of small principalities, the Normans could play the Welsh off each other, but then all of their mm. gains were only incremental. Not so easy. Okay, that kind of reminds me of the issue with Northern Ireland versus Ireland. You have a small piece of land, small area, and full of people who just want different things for their people, for their country, for their government. They all believe different things, not even talking necessarily about religion, but sort of in that way too. Ugh. Which I feel like makes them vulnerable, like he just said, to attacks, and I guess attacks or conquerings from England. The Normans could play the well Sorry, to keep pausing. Is it fair to call England Britain at the same time? All these names. Off each other, but then all of their gains were only incremental. Not so easy as winning Hastings and calling it a day. While casual war was ah. the standard for the next 200 years along the borderland marches, elements of Anglo-Norman and Welsh culture made their way across. The princes of Gwyneth, Powys, and De Haybarth picked up some Norman De political Haybarth. structures, and England learned about Welsh longbows the hard way. Although Wales didn't form into a unified nation, they did get close a couple times. Llewellyn Var fought off his family members to become Prince of Gwyneth and proceeded to bap all of his enemies out of the way so that he could assert- <laughs> Bap! 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 That's funny. Hegemony over Wales. He also tried to streamline the rules for royal succession so that every interregnum didn't immediately explode into a civil war. He then pushed eastward into the march and defeated King John of England so handily that Ooh. his barons made him sign the Magna Carta to stop being such a royal knob. Llewellyn's military successes weren't quite matched by his grandson, uh, also Llewellyn. Though he mm. did the biggest prince in Wales routine again, he was defeated by England's King Edward Longshanks. The next year, in 1283, Dang. Edward pushed into Wales and oh. stomped out the princes, using the old Norman trick of building a buttload of castles in oh, the Conquer territory to stop the locals from getting ideas. In a twist that should surprise no one- he That's kind of annoying about America. Like, y'all freaking have castles on the sidewalk. Just look out your window, there's a castle. Y'all have freaking, like, just beautiful architecture in- not even- I'm not even talking just about the United Kingdom. I'm talking about in Europe in general. While over here, bitch, we have nothing but skyscrapers and the Trump Tower. It's not fair. Where's the flavor? To do the trick. So Wales has the highest castle density of <sighs> any country in Europe, with over 600- Oh, look at that view! Oh my god. 
And it doesn't even look like these are royal people right here. These look like they're tourists just walking through a castle. What a life. Not fair, not fair, not fair. Look at that. But how, imagine the people who had to build that. But even if you're a slave, I feel like there would be some pride, right? In seeing the final product. I'm thinking positively here, but look how beautiful that is. Wow. The curvatures, the inclinations, the declines, the, the, the edges, the flags at the top post. But also imagine like this place being used as like an actual fortress, like somewhere you have to defend. Imagine all the different battles that were here and you're just walking through as a tourist. Wow. Okay. Let me shut up. Built and a hundred still, still beautiful today. That is, and I really cannot stress this enough, a stupid amount of castles. No, That's it's not. the density equivalent of 23 castles in New York City with a less impressive but still formidable two <laughs> castles just in Manhattan. Good lord. In any case, the post-conquest period was a weird century for Wales. Suddenly they were subordinate to England, but mm. soon they got tied up in the Hundred Years War, and then everybody had plague to Hundred Years War. Maybe the next chapter of this historical journey for this channel. Hundred Years War. The bubonic plague is what I'm assuming they're talking about. So while it was a real wacky time, it was also surprisingly indicative of the history still to come, as England goes about its business while holding a pillow over Wales' face, <laughs> gently shushing them and hoping nobody notices. Forgive me for speedrunning through the next several centuries, but I've already done the England plotline <laughs> once, and that was painful enough. A century <laughs> after a thwarted independence uh. uprising in 1400, Wales had the good fortune to pull a reverso and put a Welshman on the English throne. The man Ooh. in question was one Henry VII, notable ender of the war. Okay, so Lewitt Wharf, whatever his name is, is the grandpa did really good for Wales, was able to prosper. He died, his grandson came into power, fucked it all up. He got defeated by the King of England. Wales was then assimilated into, um, what's it called, what's it called, what's it called? Into England or Britain. And then somehow a Welshman ended up on the English throne. So let's see how that plays out and he set up Wales for greater integration with England and way more rights than they had before. Okay. This all became well, that's official that's via good. the Laws in Wales Act passed by Henry VIII in the mid-1500s. He drew up county borders, standardized laws, gave Welshmen equal status as Englishmen. Oh. So King Henry VIII, like I said in the intro, he was, is he the Welshman they're talking about? Gang, sh gang shit representation in Parliament. And as an added bonus of Henry's hop over to Protestantism, the church translated the Bible into Welsh. This protection of the Welsh language coincided with a new interest in medieval culture and ancient literature. This is off topic, but this is also my issue with the Bible. Not even just the fact that it's been retold a thousand times and at this point, or at, at some point, you kind of lose the truth in translation. Or in the everyone retells the story differently. How do we even know if the Bible is what actually happened, or if it happened at all, and it's not just some Saint Peter putting in his two cents? But w once you words don't translate perfectly. So my point is basically, I feel like obviously I believe in God. Obviously I'm a major Christian, but I don't really believe in the words of the Bible. I believe in the sentiments, but as for the retelling of the stories and quotations from God or Jesus himself, I don't trust them because, again, it's just... In a way, the Bible is just folklore. It's the same story as Santa Claus. A story was maybe... Maybe it's real, maybe it's not. It was retold for generations, and now you have the story you hear today. Is it true? You don't know. So therefore, I don't believe it. But I am still a Christian. Language became a defining feature of the Welsh identity. While all of this was going on, the... My mom would hate this video story of Wales got folded into the larger English narrative, mm. what with the Spanish Armada-ing, the union of the crowns of England and Scotland-ing, and the creation of a globe-spanning empire-ing. Huh. Despite playing second fiddle, maybe closer to fourth, in the history of the British Empire, Welsh literature was rising in prominence during the Romantic movement. Thanks in part Okay, so that flag, whenever I'm talking about Britain, I always use that flag. But I guess that's wrong because that is the United Kingdom flag. That flag represents four separate countries. Yeah, four countries total. So, yeah. Like he just said, all the other Scotland, Ireland, England, they have the little X generic flag. But the Wales flag, the Welsh flag, has the big dragon. And I feel like th there's a reason they chose a big old dragon to represent them. So maybe we got to learn about the flag. 
Why not just the friggin' X like the, the rest of y'all? Some shiny new editions of classic works. Specifically, Lady Charlotte Guest compiled and published the four branches of the Mabinogi, and doubly Mabinogi. translated two, so Welsh and English readers could both enjoy the hmm. medieval folklore. In contrast to Scots Gaelic going kaput and Irish Gaelic suffering a steep decline in the 1800s that they're only recently bouncing back from, Welsh literature and poetry came in clutch for the long term endurance of the language. But and I'm assuming the Gaelic language was dying off because most people were speaking English now, considering they were just conquered by. The English? Well, the Romantic era was in full swing, so too was the Industrial Revolution. So all these fancy new in America? And choo-choo trains needed coal if they wanted to do anything, and Wales happens oh. to have a crap ton of the stuff. Southern Wales swiftly mm. became the mining capital of the empire, and okay. while coal and slate may have been big business, they were also hellish jobs to work. So Wales ended the century more urbanized than it had ever been, but the Welsh probably weren't so thrilled about why. Especially as British attitudes towards them soured, and Wales got the dingy reputation shared by all other regions doing heavy industry Although I was about to say with you being the sole person providing coal for a he just said revolutionized economy throughout the the kingdom I was gonna say Wales should have used that as an opportunity to, to sort of claim their one independence but to separate themselves from being under English rule but then I remembered though the the Welsh did have their own representation like we were just saying after the English did conquer them they still had some uh they, they gained more rights under King Henry and they still had representation, but at the end of the day, they were still a part of the English Empire. So, I don't think that would have worked, actually. 1900s started out pretty rough, what with the coal mining and a nasty spell of discrimination against the Welsh language in schools and work, Wales turned a corner after the Second World War. Industry I really hate that. Why do you feel like in order... That's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. You feel like in order to conquer someone or to have them, I don't even know what your goal is at this point because you just gave them rights. So why would you want to distinguish their culture? Culture is so important. And identity and understanding yourself in your life, freaking assholes. Diversified and politicians campaigned for more regional autonomy and protections for the language. The Welsh Language Acts of 1967 and 93 elevated Welsh Ooh. to on par with English, granting bilingual <sighs> signage, the right to use Welsh in legal proceedings and Welsh language broadcasting. So I'm coming back in the summer, and I'm going to go to every single country in the kingdom, I swear. Now, a That's third so of cool. Wales can speak the native language. And in 1999, Wales, and also Scotland, but that's a different story, <laughs> got its own national assembly, later promoted to parliament. Aww. And that's Wales. Far too often sidelined in the history of the Isles, Wales has an yeah. enchanting historical vibe the other three countries lack. Maybe it's the, like Wales is the little brother. the dragon flag getting to me, so but pretty, Wales though. feels older. Like you can wander slightly too far off a hiking trail and stumble into Narnia. As anybody <laughs> who knows Welsh can confirm, it just sounds like the language dragons would speak. And I know better than to disrespect the dragon lords. Thank you so much for watching. Okay. Not gonna lie, at times I was kind of lost with this video, but I feel like I did understand a lot of it. If anything's certain, I definitely need to come see, come to Welsh, if not just to see the people, understand the culture more, but to see the architecture, to see the agriculture, to see the beautifulness that is not America.